Our planet, Earth, and the Sun are interconnected. The Sun provides the energy necessary for life on Earth, and without it, the plants, oceans, and climate would not function as they should. However, if something goes wrong with the Sun, as has happened recently, everything could go very wrong. Hello and welcome to Z. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. According to NASA, there is a powerful solar storm approaching Earth that has the potential to wipe out civilization as a whole. When magnetic energy that has accumulated in the solar atmosphere is suddenly released, massive eruptions of plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona occur. These eruptions can be as powerful as millions of hydrogen bombs detonating simultaneously. Solar storms, also referred to as space weather, are disturbances on the sun that can have a significant impact on Earth and other planets in the solar system. They originate from the sun's outermost layer, the corona. Even though CMEs can discharge billions of tons of solar material into space at speeds of millions of miles per hour, most of the time they can be predicted because the sun gives us some warnings before they occur. Satellites like the Solar Dynamics Observatory, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, and the Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory provide continuous monitoring of the sun. They offer high-resolution images and data across different wavelengths, enabling scientists to study solar flares, CMEs, and other solar activities. Telescopes on Earth are equipped with special filters to observe the sun safely. These observatories capture images at various wavelengths, such as visible light, ultraviolet, and x-rays, to study different layers of the solar atmosphere. This method involves examining the surface oscillations or vibrations brought on by sound waves in order to investigate the sun's innards. Instruments measure the strength of the sun's magnetic field, and structural changes in the magnetic field can indicate the potential for solar flares, or CMEs. Models based on observations and data help predict the speed, direction, and potential impact of CMEs heading towards Earth so that we can know what's going on and how to prepare for a new solar storm. These oscillations help scientists understand the sun's internal structure and predict its behavior. The Space Weather Prediction Center, SWPC, gathers information from multiple sources and provides predictions, alerts, and warnings about possible solar storms. Organizations such as NASA and NOAA maintain these centers. Despite all of this, we have just recently discovered the true course of a solar storm over the last 20 years. Two spacecraft, Stereo A and Stereo B, were carefully positioned in orbit around the Sun as part of NASA's Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory mission to produce a distinctive three-dimensional picture of solar activity. Stereo, an object ahead of Earth in its orbit around the Sun, had a vantage point that allowed it to monitor the CME as it moved across space, giving it insights into its movement and changes. Stereo and observed a massive coronal mass ejection originating from the Sun. This spacecraft was ideally positioned to track the course of the CME toward Earth and observe its progress. The stereo imaged the journey of the CME, which showed how it interacted with solar wind particles to transform into a massive wall of plasma as it approached Earth with careful observation of the CME's path and speed. Scientists were able to precisely forecast when it would arrive at Earth, which contributed to their understanding of the dynamics of CMEs and their evolution. In an ideal world, we would want to be fully prepared and have advanced knowledge in order to forecast space weather, which removes any uncertainty from the situation. By examining the CME's brightness in the film, scientists were able to determine how big it was. The difficulties in following coronal mass ejections as they travel through space provide major obstacles for scientists, but all of this information is crucial for understanding the energy and potential impact of such occurrences on Earth's magnetosphere. When a coronal mass ejection, CME, occurs from the sun, it is incredibly bright, but as it moves away from the sun, its intensity quickly wanes. By the time it reaches distances close to Venus's orbit, it is about a billion times fainter than the surface of the full moon, making it difficult to track. Speaking of the moon, if you've ever wanted to hold the moon in your hands, check out the link in our description to make your very own mini-moon. 
Back to solar storms, scientists understand that they can't just track CMEs after they have already erupted. Instead, they have discovered a way to identify active regions below the solar surface before they erupt as sunspots. This pre-eruption identification occurring a day or two in advance offers further insight into solar activity so we can somewhat predict what's about to happen before it actually does. All of that has now come in handy because something massive is happening with the sun. The sunspot count has spiked significantly, potentially rising by twofold in just a week. These sunspots are dark areas on the sun's surface associated with intense magnetic activity and are often the sources of solar flares and CMEs, but they've never really been this active before. What's happening now is new, and it's a threat to Earth. The heightened solar activity has resulted in multiple coronal mass ejections occurring daily. These eruptions release vast amounts of plasma and magnetic field into space, and their frequency and intensity indicate a highly active period for the sun. NASA's models suggest that one of these CMEs might be on track to intersect with Earth in the upcoming days. All of the preliminary estimations indicate a potential collision with Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere within the last week of November, however, scientists are conducting detailed analyses of the CME trajectories to confirm this eventuality. The issue here is that even if particles from a CME hit the Earth's atmosphere, it can trigger a geomagnetic storm. Earth's magnetic field is disturbed by solar eruptions, specifically coronal mass ejections, which are known as geomagnetic storms. These storms are categorized based on their intensity, measured on a scale developed by NOAA, ranging from G1, which is minor, to G5, which is more extreme. The strength of these storms depends on the power and orientation of the CME. These storms occur when solar material carrying its own magnetic field interacts with Earth's magnetic field. When a CME carrying a magnetic field oriented opposite to Earth's magnetic field collides with our planet's magnetosphere, it can cause disruptions. The frequency of these storms varies throughout the solar cycle, usually occurring every 11 years. Minor G1 storms may occur more frequently, roughly 1,700 times, while more powerful G4 storms may occur less frequently, roughly 100 times, and extreme G5 storms, which are the rarest, occur approximately 4 times per solar cycle. Each storm type has a different impact on Earth. Small storms may result in modest variations in the Earth's magnetic field, which could have little consequences, like variations in the electrical system. When charged particles from the solar wind and the ionosphere become trapped in Earth's magnetosphere during quiet times, they tend to circulate along magnetic field lines primarily concentrated around the polar regions. These particles collide with gases like nitrogen and oxygen present in the upper atmosphere, leading to the creation of auroras. During periods of low solar activity, these charged particles collide with atmospheric particles, creating auroras that are primarily visible near the poles. Extreme storms can have significant impacts and even intensify and create auroras visible at lower latitudes. These impacts energize the gases, allowing them to release light and produce the vivid aurora displays, but the whole situation is altered when a CME strikes and sets off a geomagnetic storm. Although the auroras become brighter and more vivid and are visible at latitudes further away from the poles, the fact that geomagnetic storms, especially those of higher intensity, can have significant impacts on various critical infrastructures and systems is actually terrifying. The storm's increased intensity pushes these charged particles deeper into Earth's atmosphere. This deeper penetration of these particles results in more collisions with atmospheric gases than usual. Power grids may experience fluctuations or even outages due to geomagnetically induced currents generated during these storms. These currents can also cause damage to long conductors, such as power lines. The altered plasma environment during geomagnetic storms can cause increased surface charging in satellites in orbit, which can impact onboard electronics and satellite operations and potentially lead to malfunctions or complete failure. Transformers and other electrical components can also cause blackouts and disruptions in the power supply. 
High frequency radio and radar systems are also susceptible to disruptions during geomagnetic storms, which can result in radio blackouts or degraded communication capabilities affecting aviation navigation and emergency communication systems. Strong storms cause Earth's atmosphere to expand, which increases drag on low Earth orbit satellites. This makes it more difficult to watch and operate satellites and increases the chance of collisions. Should there be a total blackout and drag, it would be as though everyone was shooting in the dark. If they don't, massive accidents could destroy everything. However, do you think that will actually happen, or could this storm pass us without causing that much damage? Please let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and watch more videos by subscribing to our channel. Similar to this, and we'll see you in the following one.